This is the e-learning podcast, episode number 55. Our goal is with Alish is if you're someone who has a lot of aspirations to create an online uh, an online experience for, for your learners, you're a course creator, you're someone who's either had courses, maybe on a Udemy or other platforms, or you want to start that, you're, you're an entrepreneur, perhaps, this would be a nice way for you, for you to say, you know what, I, I've heard of the benefits of WordPress. I've mm. heard of the power of what it can do, the flexibility. I can basically make my dreams come true without even having to code anything. Welcome to the eLearning Podcast. My name's Laddick, and I'm your host from LMSPulse.com. My guest for today is Kevin Marshall. A few years ago, Kevin stumbled into an online learning opportunity in a very niche market. After trialing a few courses that performed well, he and his partner decided to go all in. As Kevin worked to prepare a suite of courses, he found that popular publishing platforms like Teachable and Coursera, etc., they didn't offer the simplicity or the level of ownership that he desired. Now, fast forward a few years, and the result of Kevin's frustration is Owlish, and that's with two L's, O-W-W-L-I-S-H. Owlish is a WordPress plugin slash platform that aims to give you complete control of your courses and a worry-free experience with the technology. In this strategic conversation, Kevin and I talk about the ingredients to persist as an e-learning entrepreneur, including a support system and the right mix of pragmatism and hopeful patience. We also talk about the challenge of delivering simplicity through Owlish within the powerful but fairly complex system of WordPress. We also talk about why Owlish is maybe not for everyone, but why Kevin believes course creators should consider things like ownership and control, flexibility, and the real financials of delivering and promoting an online course in an established marketplace. We also talk about the importance of community building as a cornerstone of online learning delivery today and why sometimes Facebook algorithms get it wrong. And then finally, along the way, Kevin and I touch on DIY, teaching dentistry online, the weather in Phoenix, Arizona, and whether or not the four-hour work week is still relevant. Hint, maybe now more than ever before. But before we get started, a quick word from our sponsors. The eLearning Podcast is sponsored by the eLearning Success Summit. Learn from more than 40 experts how to teach, work, and learn online without being overwhelmed. Get your free ticket to the summit at elearningsuccesssummit.com and lmspulse.com, your best source for news, information, and resources for e-learning professionals for more than 10 years. Get our free roundup of the week's top news at lmspulse.com. Hello, Kevin. Welcome to the eLearning Podcast. How are you today? Doing great. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Now, my pleasure. My pleasure. Where do we find you sitting today? I am in uh, the, the large, expansive town of Phoenix, Arizona, the hot, hot city as well. And so I'm doing my best to keep cool. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Now, Phoenix, I've, I've had the pleasure of driving through Phoenix several times. And uh, yes, it's large, it's expansive. And you now we're recording this sort of Almost middle of August. Let's call it middle of August. So I bet you it is, it's an oven. Yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's, uh, I got one more month and then it starts to cool down. So it's the nice thing about Phoenix is once you get past that summer, the rest of it is smooth sailing. You feel like you're, you're in LA or something like that. And so, uh, it's, it's nice in that sense, but we just got to tough it out a little bit more. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Kevin, you, um, are, you know, the, 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 I wanted to have you on the show because you are, everything that we, we love in e-learning, right? You, you, you came from ed tech, you did the corporate thing. You've now, you know, you're now at owlish.com. Um, you know, you're not only building out systems for people, but you've also built out your own courses that have been successful in some niche markets. Um, you know, what we're going to talk about today is how, you know, it's really the, the pros and cons of do it yourself or get on a platform. I don't want to send the thunder, but I, you know, I teed you up in the intro, but why don't you give us the 30 seconds on who is Kevin Marshall, you know, and, sure. and why are, why are you here today? Yeah, great. Well, thanks for having me. Um, it's, 
something that I'm very passionate about is this notion of um, build it yourself. I came from a very do it yourself type of family. Growing up, we were we spent our weekends at like Home Depot instead of uh, you know out on the <laughs> guilty absolutely. The yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did a lot of that. So I'm yeah maybe that's a that could be my strength and weakness. I mean, there's certainly an argument in life for for having others do stuff, but I kind of grew up with that mindset of you know, you can do this yourself and, and you can enjoy the process and you can learn a lot about it. And that's worked for me. That's probably why I got into computers when I was young. I was very much into tinkering, taking things apart. And um, that led me into a career in IT um, back in the late 2000s. And there I realized I enjoyed the work. I really was having fun. I, I, I can't say that I would go to, to work and dread that. I just enjoyed taking things apart again and fixing problems for people. Um, but there was a calling that I, I always had from the beginning, which was I don't really like having a boss. I mean, I, mm. I even liked my boss. She was great, <laughs> but I still didn't like having a boss. And so around uh, 2012 is when um, my partner and I at the time, uh, and she's still with me as my wife, um, we decided, you know, let's make this, let's, let's take a different path. And we had just read the four hour work week. Mm. Someone had just recommended it to me. And uh, she had the kind of the, the spirit to kind of say to me, you know, you're doing that. You've been doing this for seven years now. When, when are you really going to take the action necessary? I mean, you talk about how you want to do this, but you haven't pulled the trigger. And, and that was what I really needed in my life is someone to kind of say, Hey, we can do this together. And so we did that. We, uh, she actually graduated as a dentist. And as she was graduating and going into her labs to get her requirements done for graduating, she was listening to the four hour work week. And she came back to me and said, uh, one night, this, is, this is it. We have to do what this guy said. <laughs> and so that was, um, a stepping stone for us. That was exciting. We, we quit, I quit my job and we, we went off and started our, our first uh, business a few years after. And I'm leaving out the fact that there was a lot of failures in between. Um, but the point is that we eventually found ourselves in the e-learning world. And that is where we've had um, a lot of fulfillment, a lot of fun. And one of my favorite things to do is build interesting stuff that's um, unique and, and um, especially trying to make an online experience more helpful mm. to people. Um, now in our, in our type of business, we actually teach dentistry, which, which at the time we started um, this business, it was kind of unheard of that you could teach dentistry online. 100%. Um, now it's becoming a little more common, but still pretty uncommon because the t stuff we're teaching is not just philosophical concepts, but they're literally practical concepts like take this, you know, take this handpiece dental drill and use it to make this technique in a plastic tooth. Mm -hmm. And that's the stuff that we, we started doing back in 2012. And so um, we, we found that e-learning is a very powerful um, way of, of reaching people all around the world. And that's what's cool to, too, is that we've had students all around the world, people that probably couldn't have showed up in person to learn from us. So, um, so that's kind of my background and, and my partner's background, how we kind of got into the whole e-learning uh, uh, world here. Super cool. I love that. And, but one last question before I dive into the, you know, build it yourself or not conversation. I've been using the podcast as a sort of a, a small time capsule on just sort of the COVID you, you know, situation. Mm -hmm. What's, you know, here in the middle of August, 2021, what's it look like outside your door in, in the greater Phoenix area? Yeah. I mean, I, that's, uh, an interesting, you know, it's it's different in Arizona than maybe other parts of the country. Where um, I grew up in California, and I uh, was a native, you know, native California all the way. Um, here in Phoenix, um, we are a lot more loose. <laughs> I'll just say that. Uh, I love everybody, you know, especially like especially in the states. Everybody, you know, you, you, it, it's not a political question. It's just like, hey, how you know how what's your exactly. experience? Exactly. You know, so. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's sadly that sadly the politics comes into it no matter, you know, you, you, it's a, it's something that shouldn't be political, but I guess it is now for me, I'm kind of in the middle anyway. So it kind of works for me. I, 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 res I feel like for me, I like to wear a mask myself, but I also, um, I think if, I think we're out seeing a pretty high number of vaccinations out there yeah. uh, around us. And so I, I feel relatively comfortable here. 
Uh, but it's been a, it's been a tough year. And I think what's hard about COVID for us here in Phoenix has been the summers with children have been really tough because mm. we um, uh, we're basically in a time capsule. We're basically in the capsule itself. And we can't get out of the house. <laughs> so we're in a, we're really that. not having that freedom. And I'm sure that people have had that in the other, you know, if, if you're in the Northern States and you're in the winter, same idea. So it's, you know, that's the unfun part. Um, and where I do miss, my old California days where no matter what time of year it was, I could go and take sure, a jog yeah. or something. That's yeah. And that, yeah, that mimics, you know, a lot of the experience down here in Mexico city right now, you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're raving just simply because, you know, uh, the kids went back to school this last week and we, they haven't done that for, for, you know, a year and a half. So we, <laughs> we are exciting. ecstatic. We are just beyond ecstatic Oof. right now. Um, and you know, just like we've been saying for a year, nobody's exploded. You know, there haven't been any spontaneous yeah. combustions, you know, like right. you know, buildings didn't fall down. And um, so there's still a long way to go, but awesome. Thanks. Thanks. For, yeah. Thanks for I mean, I that. think, I think the, the fears were certainly there that the world was going to collapse. And uh, maybe if anything, it's shown that we're, we're a little more resilient than we thought. So, mm. Awesome. Right. So uh, get, be a little self-promotional for a second for me. Um, yeah. Alish, is can I go there and you know because so just to give you a sense as well the people listening right now are you know some of them are you know your traditional professors most of us are you know the traditional professor or teacher or whatnot some of us are master class creators you know entrepreneurs and whatnot some of us are guys like you and me we sit in the server room we're more interested in the tech actual tech aspects of it um, what happens when I go to alish.com is, is a platform that I can get. Is it a technology? Is it a process? What, what exactly are we getting there? And yeah, let's just, let's just start. I, I would there. say it's a solution is the best way I've found to, to put it. Um, now there's a lot of solutions and that's sort of a, a strange word to use, I guess. Technically it is a platform and technically it is a plugin. There will be kind of a, a hybrid model of that, but more importantly, instead of getting into like, how does it technically work? I'd rather kind of just say that what what our goal is with Alish is if you're someone who has a lot of aspirations to create an online, uh, an online experience for, for your learners, you're a course creator, you're someone who's either had courses, maybe on a Udemy or other platforms, or you want to start that you're, you're an entrepreneur, perhaps this would be a nice way for you, for you to say, you know, what, I, I've heard of the benefits of WordPress. I've mm. heard of the power of what it can do, the flexibility. I can basically make my dreams come true without even having to code anything. It's sort of, you know, in, the, in line with that no code movement that's happening right now. Uh, WordPress is extraordinarily vast in terms of the, all the different tools and so much of it is free. And if it's not free, it's way cheaper than anything you'll, you'll get out there. Um, and so it's for a DIY type person, it's a great place to start and it's a great place to end too. Uh, the New York Times uses WordPress. So it's, it's a fantastic platform that has so much room to breathe. And the one thing it, that, that is the caveat to that is like anything that's advanced and powerful and extendable and infinite, that also means it's extremely complex. Mm. And that's the problem that we're trying to, to see if we can rein in on that. Let's, what if I wanted to create a course in a matter of, of hours on my WordPress site instead of days or weeks, which is re the reality. I could, I could tell everybody here, you could start a course in minutes. And technically that would be true. You could start a course. But the reality is that when people start creating these courses on these platforms, there's gazillions of settings, there's gazillions of options, and they don't, none of it's done for you. It's more like, okay, do this and do that and do that and this. Mm -hmm, and, this. Mm -hmm. and eventually you start to build out this thing. And then the, you look at the front of your website, of your course site, let's say, and you're like, oh, this isn't what I had in my mind. Why? <laughs> and that's what we're also trying to solve is what, why can't we get people to just install something and it looks like they dreamed it up and, or at least it looks like the picture that we told sure. it would look like. And yeah. that's the problem with, I think a lot, and it's not any fault of any of, of WordPress developers or anything like that. I think that's just the nature of WordPress is that it, 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 tends to skew towards that immense flexibility and like, Hey, we don't want to get in your way. You make it look like you want to, we'll, we'll step back. And that's great for developers and designers that have a very strong sense of what they want. But for people who don't including myself, by the way, I, I used to think I was a good designer and I'm not, then 
there's got to be something a little more like let's do it for you and i and i think that's um what we're trying to get to at so that's one component and the other component is we really want to encourage people to take the power back in their own hands mm. don't be scared of having your own platform i know it's it seems like the good idea to have one site you know for your courses and one site for your marketing and one site for your crm and one site for you know tons of different domains that you're sending people to um, check out. It happens on another, you know, you're, you have a customer experience where someone's checking out for your course on your main site and they're going to PayPal or they're going to another checkout system and they're coming back and they're sent to another course site and they have a new login details. We want to make that experience for the learner, like click credit card in there. And now I'm logged in. I'm looking at my course, not, Oh, where's my email? Where I, how mm -hmm. do I log in? Mm -hmm. And this is some of the stuff that happens when you use too many different services and components for your business. We want to make it all kind of unified and we want to make that branding something that you can have a beautiful marketing site or front end site to sell your course, which matches in every way the course itself. So that's, those are some of the, the things that we're, we're trying to tackle there. And uh, uh, it is, we're, in very early beta right now, and it will be available soon. So we're hoping that um, for, for those of you who are listening right now, um, when you go to that site, you can either, you'll be able to join or you'll be able to, to get on the waiting list. So Fantastic, right. So within that soup, within that menage, you know, it, it would be really easy for someone, especially, hey, I just wrote, you know, I, I, I basically just got done writing my book and now I'm ready to make a course out of it. Or, you know, I don't really consider myself tech savvy and what you just described sounds horrifically complex. Um, but at the, on, the, on the flip side of that, we also know that there are a ton of people out there who have realized financial success, freedom. Uh, and I, what, what I love that you put on the table, you know, you didn't even use that. You said, Fulfilling you, you and your partner, you, you found there was great fulfillment in becoming yeah. a part of the e-learning world, at, you know, by putting courses out there. Let's talk about the advantages of this. Like, so what, what are the advantages of DIY, um, building something through WordPress, et cetera. Let me offer that to you. And sure. What are, you know, what okay. are your top five things that you go to? And when you, when you start talking to someone. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll start with the disclaimer that it's not right for everybody. Not everybody is our customer. <laughs> yeah, for and sure. So that's something that, that I think, I, I think it's great for people, especially if you think about someone who's maybe just starting off from the, from the get go, the first thing that you need to do is, as a course creator, and I'm, and I'm not talking LMSs because I think that's a different category. I used to work in education and IT education actually for a while. And I, and I understand the LMS world itself, but we're not really trying to become an LMS or for an institutional side of things. For, let's, for, and let's, uh, let's break that down for anybody. Again, yeah, who's just a complete new sure. LMS learning management system, Google classroom, Moodle, Blackboard, Canvas. These are the big names that you've yep. heard out there. You know, whenever you go in, even in, I, I often try, I try to mention this also, you know, in your, if you work for a corporation, like the, the, a lot of the learning development teams, yeah. they have one of these big learning management systems as well, where you put up course material. This is where your teacher interacts with you or your trainer interacts with you, those kinds of things they can be unwieldy. They can be huge. They can be. Yeah. And they're in their own, and right? Again, just just as much thing. as WordPress can, like, you know, they can get yeah. out of control pretty quickly as well. So just wanted to make that distinction. Great. Yeah. No, thank you for that. And I think that, um, you know, people, there are institutions that use WordPress and an LMS plugin for, for their core systems. And that's, that's, cool um we're we're i'm mostly focused on the again the the entrepreneur mm -hmm. someone who's selling courses to individuals per, per se or to the to small companies and so i would say if if you're just starting off i think a great way to start is a, something like a udemy is something like skillshare something one of these places that's sort of a marketplace where you can um as a creator put your courses on there and let people uh, see if if you got something there. Now I will say there that that's a decision I'll let people make. There's a, there's pros and cons to that. Um, but if your goal is to see if this is a value is a valid business, um, if there's any if there's any hope here for you becoming your own entrepreneur or making your own source of income outside of maybe your nine to five, this is a great that's a great place to start. Where I think people um, get interested in their own platform is after they've established, hey, this is a viable business. And why am I giving 
either 10 to 70% of my profits to a Udemy or to another kind of platform like that. Mm. When I'm doing a lot of the work myself, I created the course. I, um, I'm the one who's marketing the course and I make the most money when I market my own course, right? So if Udemy does it for me, I make a little bit of money. But if I do it, I make a ton of money. Mm. So why am I giving all my profits to them? And I have to give some profits maybe, you know, um, it's like the Amazon tax for e-commerce. You know, people are in e-commerce, right? Exactly. Like you can yeah. go to the you can go to the jungle, but you're you're already paying whatever it is, twenty five percent on. You know that that's they're already taking their cut before they even consider yeah. giving you your money, right? So it's and like that's that the move to Shopify. Um, same kind of thing. So I think with with the notion of a of your own platform, it 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 really is something that maybe maybe not everybody needs it, but I think when you the larger your business gets, the larger your courses get. Um, the more um, learners you start to accumulate, that's where you start to think about, wait, what could I do to make this um, a little more personalized too? So, yes. Yeah, so number one, there's just the money side of things. You're gonna you're gonna re reap more of your of your profits from your courses. That's pretty important for people. Mm -hmm. Number two, there's the competition side of it. If you're on a Udemy or a Skillshare and you're doing well. With a brand new course, it's fresh. No one's ever thought of that, about this before. No one's ever thought about you know teaching how to make DIY soap this way or whatever like right. that. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Well, you're going to hit some major profits for a year or two, and then what's going to happen is basically you've open sourced your entire business for the world. And so every entrepreneur out there who's like, "Oh, I make soap too. I could do. I could do that better," is now going to come up right against you. Take your entire table of contents or your um, your course outline, I should say, go through every video, buy your course for twenty dollars, and you know that's a not a very high threshold to to worry about if you want to copy someone's course, and they can just kind of go through and 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 mimic that course. Now we've yeah. had this done to us, and we weren't even on a Udemy, so mm -hmm. it happens, and it definitely happens more on those kind of platforms. And then suddenly they're reverse engineering your your success and trying to compete with you and get better ratings and get re better reviews. And so if you if you are okay with that, yeah, that's great. Play that game and be the dominant, you know, leader in, in whatever course uh, topic you you decide to go with. Um, but for me, that's just a game I didn't want to play. In fact, for for our niche, we've had a lot of success because people didn't even think this was a topic. Sure, yeah, they weren't even thinking about it. They're like, oh, I, I would have never in a million years if you put me in a room, I would have never written down your course as. As something and yet it's been a six figure successful course for years so i think it's really important to 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 consider these long-term impacts do i want to if i have something really special and i know i'm good and i don't need to necessarily test a lot of marketing stuff i just know that people will buy this people are interested maybe you don't need to throw yourself out there and let everybody just see your entire business model like naked maybe you can bring it into your own platform and do your own marketing that's not as obvious you get your learners through the door but you're not necessarily um out on a marketplace where everybody could kind of like see oh this made this many sales that made this okay let's go with this person so i think there's something there's a bit of a danger there for folks that that are really kind of thinking long term in their business the other thing that i would say is personalization and customization for the experience that you can offer your learners is vastly, um, I will say it's rather limited on those platforms, even, mm -hmm. even stuff like Teachable. There's, there's limitations. You can do a lot of integration now more and more. And so you might be able to kind of put something together that has some automations and things like that. Um, but for instance, just to give you a specific example, in, in our courses, what we were able to do is we have a very specific threshold for whether they're learning the material that we want them to learn or not. Mm. And we we were able to automate that a little bit more by custom coding our own feedback dashboard system where oh, okay. we are able to have them tell us, okay, here's we have we ask them to take pictures of their work, send it to us, they they put it into a form, and then our system will go through. It'll it'll allow us to look at it in an easy way. And then we are able to deliver back to them a kind of a, a reporting dashboard that showcases how they're doing over time. And, you know, basically here's sort of an average of all, all the work you've done. And that's really helpful for people. That's something that we would not be able to do on a, again, a Udemy or a Teachable because those platforms are just not built for that. So if you have unique, um, a, a unique subject matter 
where you really want someone to learn in a, you know, something online that's just hard to get, hard to grasp. With something like your own platform, you really have the ability to to hire out someone to, to build custom tools just, for you. Right. And you can dream them up, which is mm-hmm. which is exciting. Juxtapose for me, uh, you know, take you know, sort of just taking a course, right? Uh, and and building out a course versus I know that you've you've talked a lot in at least in, in sort of the pre-show membership site. Like what's your take on the difference between, hey, I'm going to put a course out there that people can do versus here's I'm going to build, for lack of a better term, right? A membership or, you know, the, you know a brand that people can really buy into and how, what's the difference in complexity there? Are, are they one sure. and the same, et cetera? Well, the cool thing about a, a thing like WordPress is that you can add in existing membership tools pretty easily. Um and so if you have a, if you built out a course site, let's say on your WordPress site, you can say, you know, I'm going to add some membership stuff. So what we did just to be specific again, is we started with the courses, mm-hmm. we built it on WordPress back in the day, and we used existing LMS plugins that are out there and they did the job. And so we had the course, but then we said, you know, people are asking questions to us all the time. What if we allowed them to ask each other questions a little bit more? Mm-hmm. So we added through a forum on now forum plugin, bunch of free ones. There's a bunch, you know, paid, get paid ones. We added that it wasn't that big of a deal, took a little bit of setup, and suddenly now they're talking, they're asking questions of each other. It'd be nice if they also had sort of like a chat. We saw people were interacting a lot on Facebook. This is back in the 2013-14 era. <laughs> and so we're like, yes. whoa, what's this? What's this all about? So we we were able to find a plugin that does a really cool chat where it shows up on the bottom and they can click it and see who's online right now. Oh, mm. we've had people that um, have studied for, for live tests before and maybe a location like Los Angeles, and they're going to show up on, you know, a September date three, two or three months ahead of time. And they've they've met each other in our chat room on our course site and they were the only ones online. They said, well, what are you studying for? Oh, I'm studying for this test. And they, they, many times this has happened where they discover each other, they start studying with each other and then they meet each other in person. And one's in, you know, a uh, place like Eastern Europe and the others in, in uh, India and they become friends that way. And so that's, what's neat about having, you know, I, I think Facebook could possibly get to some similar results. You could do some sort of, Sure. Offsite mm-hmm. Facebook group, right? So you could have your internal course on your website, and then all the group stuff has to happen on Facebook. The thing with that is that Facebook has their own interests in mind, not your interests as a mm-hmm. business owner and not as a as a teacher even. And so, if your course is, you know, if your course group, you know, uh, basically your Facebook group is killing it and it's just so active, great. They'll probably send lots of of notifications to your to your learners. But if it's not, and it's just kind of ramping up a little bit and things go quiet, well, they might just shut off your group completely. And even though they're in your group, the algorithm may decide, you know what, this group is not that hot. This other mm-hmm. one about, you know, Paris Hilton or whatever, or or <laughs> some drama, that's, or some, yeah, political drama, that's what we're going to show instead. And sure. so your your business kind of gets edged out, even if your your learners want to hear that information, even if they want to see um, what someone's asking uh, in their in their kind of co- cohort. So I think it's important to consider membership as a really cool way to keep your learners engaged, to allow them to connect, help each other out, and get to know each other. And mm-hmm. um, I'll say this w- one last thing, which is the power of um, of our learners telling uh, the word of mouth power is just incredible. And so we've had some of uh, our best success has come not through marketing channels like SEO, but through our success from some student telling their friends, hey, take take their course, mm, join mm-hmm. their community. And sure. I think that's because we've done a good job nurturing that community, keeping in touch with them and allowing them to feel like they're a part of something bigger. And that's something that can't be very easily replicated in a Facebook group. I just hate to say it. I mean, there's some groups that are wonderful and they're huge and they're active, but um, it's really hard to kind of create that off the bat um, in a, in a small group on Facebook. So I think, I think that gives you a lot of advantage as, as a, uh, as a teacher um, and a lot of loyal learners that are going to tell others about it. So far we've, uh, we've talked about all the, all the smiles and, you know, the, the red ribbons and, and good stuff that's happened. You alluded to about, you know, 20 minutes ago, 
this all didn't happen overnight. There were some fails. There was, you know, finding your, not only finding your path in this entrepreneurial journey, but also I'm sure as you've built the course out and whatnot, can, would you be willing to share yeah. a couple of, Hey, you know, this really didn't work. We fell on our face and either, you know, we just kind of pivoted and threw it away or here's how we recovered from it or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, there's a few things I would say that um, I I would say with ours. So we've we've had we had a bunch of different business ideas before kind of getting into the e-learning world, um, and those were the failures that I that I spoke about. One was some sort of SaaS type thing that didn't work out. We had some other product that didn't work out. So I'll just say, in general, there will be always failures and expect them. Now with courses specifically, I have actually um, had a few um, experiences where I've, we've tried to, to take a successful course in one, maybe um, target audience. Let's say if you think marketing wise, maybe you have a target audience that is for us, maybe dentists. And then let's say mm -hmm. if we could expand that to other types of people, teach similar things. That's definitely difficult um, because you are in the mindset of helping one group and you understand their needs. You might be one of them. You know, my wife is one of our of the type of target market that we're often um, working with. So we understand their needs very well, and then trying to extrapolate that and help another maybe adjacent or other type of of target audience is a challenge. Um, I have had a mostly failure with with this. Um, I did about three or four different ones, um, and what what I'll say about this is, um, my main kind of summation of why some of this didn't work. Some of it was just that I didn't understand the customer, so that's really important. And then the other thing is like time. So I'll, I'll give you a quick example. Um, I started working on one where it was going to be helping um, people with maybe interviewing. Because mm. um, that's one of the things that we can help people with. So let's take the interview and create a course for that. Now, I'm, yeah, I want to expand that to everybody. So I began making YouTube videos um, to help people with not just academic programs, but also jobs and things like that. This is about three years ago. I created videos for probably a good year. And then it was just like, things got busy. This wasn't really taken off. Let's just, you know, this is not what I want to do anyway had a kind of an existential crisis. It's oh, this is, this is not what, <laughs> not what wake, makes me want to wake up in the morning anyway. So I, I chose to stop that project, but here's the thing. The videos that I put up when I stopped that project were getting where I was pushing with Google ad traffic and they were, you know, hitting like a two or 300 views mm -hmm. max. Mm -hmm. And I, once I stopped the Google ads, it went plummeted down. And I said, this is a good, this is a good sort of um, confirmation that this was not a viable business. Two years later, I check it, and my videos are now hitting 14,000, <laughs> 20,000. <laughs> and so yeah, I'll say this for those of you who are like frustrated, for some of your listeners who might be have started something and they're frustrated and maybe they're halfway in, um, make sure that you really are not just jump and ship too early because yeah. again, some of this stuff takes a long time to mature and especially some of these marketing channels, you really have to just give them a, a be, be patient. And maybe that could take two or three years. So, you know, some, to sum it up, if I had really wanted to pursue that, I think I could now, I think that could be a very viable and successful business. Um, but it, that's my kind of lesson for others is, is don't give up too early. Give yourself about five good years to figure something out. You're either going to pivot with you know, mm -hmm. from the business you have to a different topic or something, or you're going to just figure it out. But one way or another, don't be too impatient. Don't think this is going to like rise up in, in a year and you're going to be, you know, on, on talk shows. I love, yeah. I love that you, let's take the shine off of the, you know, entrepreneurial gold star, you know, the culture that's been created over the last, let's call it 10 years, especially right. Yeah. Where the entrepreneur is king, you know, every man and woman that can out there, you can start your own thing and, you know, as long as you have the right plugins and are, you know, tenacious, it's going to happen overnight and blah, blah, blah. That's, I, I, I'll raise my hand. I mean, I've been in this for, <laughs> I mean, there's gray hair here, right? Like, I mean, there's 20, there's 20 plus years in here and I, but it's, and I have the same thing as you, right? A, a different show that I used to do on a podcast. We still have it out there just cause 
and it just still kind of ticks over. You still get inquiries from it. You know, you, it, it, it brings in traffic. And so the, the, I would, I would only add to what you said is that everything that you create and you put out in the interwebs, it's an asset out there. And so, you know, check in on it every now and then, or don't, you know, don't discount it. Like, you know, the, 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 the moment it's, 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 it is that snowball, right? And, and if you can be consistent and execute consistently over a longer period of time, that's where, you know, that modest success comes from where you can kind of wake yeah. up when you wake up one day, three, four years in, you're like, wait a second, I, this is what I'm doing for a living now. So this is, this is who I am now. Yes. So it's really cool. How stuff. did this happen? I, um, I will say one thing quickly is that there's a great Elon Musk reel or, or some little short video I saw, which he was being interviewed and, and he said, you know, you don't, if you and your competitor are, are going for the same thing and you're willing to work 80 hours and they work 40, you could be half as smart of them and you'll still beat them. Mm. So just, you know, just remember that. It, it, and he's someone to talk. <laughs> so uh, I think that if you're, you know, he's smart, but he's also worked very, very hard. And so I think um, if, if you're willing to take that time and uh, do your best, I think eventually you'll get to where you want to get. So let's, let's round out this conversation with specific recommendations on tools. Like what, if you were to you know, I've got a masterclass I want to start tomorrow or, you know, Hey, I'm a professor and I teach a course, but I'd also like to, you know, uh, put my, you know, my textbook online or whatever like that. What, what are my yeah. kind of my first, first steps that you'd recommend in the DIY sure. world? And then maybe some specific technologies that you'd look at. Okay. Yeah. I, I think there's more and more coming out. I know, and I'm not, I'm no expert in this. It would be something that I should probably be be uh, bring myself up to some more knowledge about but i know there's a lot of budding new um kind of like code free platforms that are on the rise where you can build your dream again you can build your dream experience your, your possibly your dream course i still um i am biased towards wordpress just because I'm, I'm a big fan of it um and I feel, still think it has a long runway to go. It's not going to be going around, going away anytime soon. I think it, they're actually doing a lot to, to transform the inner core to make it an easy, pleasant experience for people to begin uh, much, much more beginner focused than it's ever been. So I think it's getting a lot better and that's going to even be easier and easier to come. Um, so there's a lot of, look for a platform. I would say this, like, don't just build your business on a Facebook. Beware of building your, your course business on too many different domains, you know, okay, courses, subdomain, you know, courses.mysite.com, mysite.com, uh, sales or checkout.com. I mean, just try to make it a little more, you know, forums that people have their own forums that mm -hmm. are on a separate site than their right. course site. Try mm -hmm. to bring it all under one roof. That's, I just ask that, that you do that because if you really want those tools to be utilized by your students, your learners, they don't want to be logging into five different websites. They want to just get the information they need. So there are, there will be new tools coming out to make this easier for people and they will not be named Facebook. They will not be named Instagram. <laughs> sure. You can do this on your own world and then you can build your own, um, your own ecosystem in which you have the power and no one can just say, Oh, you know what? I'm going to change the algorithm and your, your business is, is flattened in a second. So I would look at WordPress in general. Um, Take a look at Alice. I'll put that plug in there. Uh, but there's a lot of great e-learning e tools for WordPress. That's what's cool about it. And if that, if our tool, Alice, doesn't work for you and you want something more advanced and customized and a bunch of different odds and end features, there's like five other ones out there. You talk, you know, you were talking about Lifter LMS. Mm. There's some fantastic plugins out there that are really mature, really have done that you can do a gazillion things with. Um, and same with membership stuff. There's, again, there's one of the more default ones in the WordPress community is called BuddyPress. Mm -hmm. Simply install that and you have like a little mini Facebook going. Does it mm -hmm. take some time to configure? Yeah, but if you're willing to stay up a little late at night and, and burn the midnight oil, you can figure it out. It's nothing that you need to have any coding experience with. Same thing with forums. There's a, a forum called BBPress. It's old, it's reliable, it's tried and true. It's, it's very stable you can stick that in. And within, you know, again, within minutes you have an, a little forum on your website in WordPress. Um, there's also third-party solutions that you can look at. And there's even um, some new third-party tools that are, that are making membership um, even easier to plug in anywhere. I think that, I don't recall the names of them, but I've seen them out there now. And so I think, um, I think just having the attitude of, I wanna do this myself is the best place to kind of start. 
and then just do some research. You know, I'm giving you a few ideas to co explore, mm -hmm. but um, the overall decision needs to be made. Do I want to just, you know, sign up for three or four different services for each thing in my business? Because there's different components to your business, it's not just courses. How do I make that membership happen? How do I make the chat stuff happen? How do I make the, the checkout a, a good experience? How do I give them feedback? Do I want to try to tie all those up and thread them all with Zapier or is there a better way? Can I make this a little more coherent and, mm -hmm. and, um, and connected uh, experience for the user where they don't feel like everything's kind of disjointed? And so if you're willing to make that decision, you'll find the tools, I, I guarantee it. Awesome. You're always welcome to, welcome to hit me up. No, I was just <laughs> saying. Kevin at, at Owlish. <laughs> so, uh, so then just final to, to put closure there. And then this is always, it's a little dangerous question to ask is like, what's, what's a minimum investment that I could be, you know, that mm. I might expect is, you know, is it, can I get something decent up and running for less than 500 bucks? Am I looking at an investment of another zero there, 5,000? Is it, you know, how astronomical should I think? Especially like, look, I'm, I'm the expert. I've got my course that I want to put up there, but I'm not necessarily the tech set or maybe I just don't have the time, right? I've got a family, I've got a kid, yeah. like this isn't where I want to put my effort. I want to put it in the, the, the material, the community, you know, that kind of thing. Um, over to you. What do you, what do you think? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I, I think that's a really good question to ask because it's, it really depends on, I mean, hate, and it depends, right? It hate to, to say that, but it depends on where where you are in life. Like you said, if you're super busy and you have zero time to be learning some new platforms, you just want to get this thing off the ground. Um, you have the, you could either pay somebody to do it all for you, and that's that is easy, mm -hmm. um, or you can sign up for a bunch of different services that have done a lot of this for you and and have a more disjointed experience for for your learners. And maybe that'll just that'll that could be good enough. And so just choose the one that's good enough. I'd say if if that's your situation, if you have more time or money, um, then building your own thing out is going to be a great solution. If you have no money and you have a lot of time, you can literally build something like this, what I'm talking about out for, I mean, I could think of as low as like $500, you could have something out. There's tons of, mm -hmm. you know, cheap and free themes to make it look good. Even ones that are e-learning specific on WordPress. There's, you know, having a LMS plugins, a few hundred bucks, having, um, you know, the, some of the forums and membership stuff is often free for those things. So you could really get something up and running for cheap. I've seen people do it. Uh, some of our competitors, I've seen their websites like, wow, they, they did this for cheap. Um, and that's great. That's exciting. Um, or if you want to have a, you know, again, the New York Times uses WordPress. So if you want to have a more beautiful, luxurious experience that goes with that brand. You're selling high ticket courses. You don't want a cheap looking website. I get it. You can do that too. And that's where I would say, just you pay some good people that really know what they're doing. There's a famous uh, doctor, I won't mention his name, um, but there's a famous doctor that's out there, um, big personality. I've actually um, developed some software for WordPress that, that he uses. Mm -hmm. So I know that he uses WordPress and it's a beautiful sure. site. You'd never think of it. And there's a membership component and there's probably gazillions of people on there. And so people are using it in that way, but they, they've they to obviously paid people uh, that know what they're doing to make it look pristine and beautiful and a great experience for their for their members and learners. Fantastic. Kevin Marshall, you are the founder of Owlish.com. Um, as with so many of these conversations, I feel like we're just getting started, but you know, it's time to kind of wrap in a bow and, uh, you know, call, call an end to this one here. I thank you very much for your time today. I, I, I want to circle back with you six months from now, whatever, when you do officially launch and, uh, you know, and, right. and see where things are going, but thank you so much for your pretty providing your expertise today and being on the show. Thank you. It's been a, a great conversation, really fantastic, uh, discussion. So thanks. Thanks again for tuning into today's episode of the e-learning podcast. If you like what you heard, please do me the favor of following us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or whichever social media you prefer. Also, if you're interested in diving deeper on e-learning, I encourage you to get your free ticket to the e-learning success summit, where there are more than 70 hours of presentations on best practices. Just go to elearningsuccesssummit.com. And then finally, for the latest news, information, and resources about e-learning, come subscribe to our newsletter at lmspulse.com. Thanks.